Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds, Thursday morning. Let's talk baseball. Uh, Playoffs so far, your thoughts? Well, there will be no games today. Yeah. (laughs) Everyone gets day off. These were all sweeps. Now, when you have a best of three series, that's hardly uncommon, but each team won the first two games of the series, so it is all over in the American League. The Texas Rangers going to Florida, beating the Tampa Bay Rays 7-1. to The Rays are punchless. Something wrong with that team. They started out so well, almost appeared to be indomitable, and perhaps going to win everything, and they fold in two games. All right, that's Tampa Bay. They're out of it. The Minnesota Twins who are not a heavy-hitting team, blank the Toronto Blue Jays 2-0. That is the final score, 2-0. And the first run of the game hit by Carlos Correa. It was a base hit with the bases loaded, and one run came in. The other came in on a double play. That doesn't count as an RBI, but it does count as a run, obviously. And Minnesota gets the uh, wins in this one, 2-0 over the Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto, I don't know what happened to them, but they also went through a power defusion in that series. Now... In the National League, this is, uh, this is a pretty interesting situation because you have the Arizona Diamondbacks going into Milwaukee. I thought the Milwaukee Brewers were a dark horse for the World Series because their pitching is so good. But it didn't last. The Arizona Diamondbacks beat them by, uh, well, they, well, they get into the situation, beat them 5-2 to two last night, and Milwaukee had any number any number of opportunities to break this game open. Bases loaded one out in the seventh inning, couldn't score. Bases filled again in the ninth inning, couldn't score. That's been the problem with the Brewers. Yes, they won the National League Central Division title, but they didn't come through with the big offense. Five to two, the Diamondbacks go on now to meet the Dodgers. And in the National League, <laughs> is there anything anything in sports more raucous than Philadelphia crowds? My goodness, you get a winner in Philadelphia. And those fans are on the bandwagon in every, just every imaginable capacity. And they were there last night, full house, over 45,000 at Citizens Bank Park, Philadelphia, beating Miami 7-1. to Aaron Nola, who is All-American at LSU and will be a free agent at the end of the season, gets the victory in this one. Philadelphia got a grand slam from Bryson Stott. Now you're saying, who in the world is Bryson Stott? Well, he was... One of the top draft choices in 2020 from Nevada, Las Vegas. Philadelphia got him in the first round. Paid him Boku Bucks, and he has come through. He's been just a very, very good, solid player. So we have all sweeps in the playoffs. No baseball today, no baseball tomorrow. But then the divisional best of five series begins on Saturday. Man, a lot of fun, but uh, you kind of feel for those Milwaukee fans, man. They've just been through it, man. You know, it's it's kind of like I said with the in regards to the Super Bowl last year with the Eagles. Um, the AFC in football is just battle tested. Milwaukee not so battle tested in that division. Not in the Central Division, no. It the, was uh, arguably the weakest division yeah. in all of baseball. And to think about this, the Cardinals finish in last place in the weakest division. Oh my my. So last weekend, my K-State Wildcats had the weekend off, and tomorrow night I actually get to watch them play against uh, Oklahoma State in Oklahoma State against the Cowboys. That should be a nice game. Boone Pickens Stadium is where they're playing on the campus of Oklahoma State. It's been totally refurbished, as has the IBA Arena in basketball. Mr. Pickens' money did uh, quite a bit for Oklahoma State. <laughs> yeah. That's his alma mater. The fact is that Kansas State goes down there and plays Oklahoma State and beats K-State Wildcats, who are a big favorite in this game. 11 points on Oklahoma State's home turf, unheard of. But the Cowboys aren't very good. They appear to be in a rebuilding stage, lost to South Alabama this year in Stillwater. South Alabama's not bad, mm-hmm. but they went in there. You don't beat Oklahoma State, a Big 12 team? No, beat them 33-7. to That tells you that Oklahoma State's having trouble getting their offense started. So K-State, very big game. There are a number of others, mostly on Saturday, if not all on Saturday. The uh, re- <laughs> They used to call it the Red River Shootout. Now they call it the Red River Rivalry. Well, this Red River Rivalry is in its final year in the Big 12. It continues, at least we think it does anyway, when both teams move to the SEC next year. Oklahoma versus Texas. They played every year. It's a, a great region. It's not just a regional rivalry. It is a national rivalry. Yeah, at this point. Playing the old Cotton Bowl in the on the Texas Fairgrounds in Dallas. They'll have 75 
thousand. And they split the crowd. Have you ever seen it, Mike? Uh, in per, in person, no. On TV, hell yeah, a million red, times. Red, red on one side, oh, yeah. orange on the other. It's it's really a, it's a classic. Texas, they both teams are unbeaten. Texas is a five point favorite going into this one. A little surprised at that margin. So I think I may have told you this yesterday, but looking for the spread on the LSU Missouri game, and the spread came out looking for the Tigers by six and a half points. <laughs> Well, that's a big help. They're both the Tigers. Which one are you talking about? Went through all the stats and never mentioned one till we got to the color. And it was the Purple Tigers, which are LSU. They are favored by six over Mizzou. Should be, I think, a pretty good game, and I wouldn't sell Mizzou short of this. I wouldn't either. Alabama goes to Texas A&M late Saturday afternoon. Alabama, a two-and-a-half-point pick. Texas A&M has been up and down your offensive coordinator there is Bobby mm-hmm. Petrino. Arkansas playing Ole Miss. On Saturday night, Ole Miss is a double-digit favorite, ten and a half over the Razorbacks. Notre Dame has an interesting game in Louisville, playing at the uh, new, they renamed it. I'm not going to go into what the new name is, but they have a the Louisville Cardinals have a new name for their stadium. Notre Dame goes down there, and Notre Dame is favored in this game by six over the Louisville Cardinals. And then the one that a lot of folks are looking at, it doesn't have really national implications to it, but Coach Prime takes his team on the road to Phoenix to play Arizona State. Arizona State's in Tempe, which is a little, uh, it's not a suburb, but it's part of the uh, overall metropolitan area in Phoenix. And they'll play at Sun Devil Stadium. Okay, Colorado's going to win this one, folks. The Golden Buffs, four and a half point picks over Arizona State. Arizona State Sun Devils aren't very good, and I think that Colorado's getting a whole lot better. That's among the many games, there are many of them all across the country. It should be just a great Saturday. Yeah, and uh, you notice that there uh, have been a lot more uh, Coach Prime interviews on primetime TV recently, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Losing also, two in a row. Oh, I'll, my God. Well, also, I, I will. I want to go back to the Mizzou-LSU game. Um, you know, Mizzou, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and talk a bunch of trash on the Tigers, but they've had a hell of a season, and it's tough to beat those guys at home. And LSU, after that, I know they're angry. I know they got beat by Ole Miss, and it was what that game was the week before, but – I, I, man, after watching K State go in there and get beat by a field goal, it's tough to beat those guys, but K State's not LSU. A field goal followed by, or I should say preceded by, a five yard penalty. A 61 yard field goal beat them. Okay, there's a measure of luck involved in that one, but hey, the kid booted it through. They kept it there. You And you talk about Kansas State being, a, they are. They're a very good team. Anything can happen in a rivalry like that. I mean, these teams have been playing. They're not in the same conference now, but they've been playing now for decades and decades, K-State and Missouri. So really that rivalry came back into play in a sense. Uh, the knock against Missouri has not played anybody other than K-State. You know, Memphis and uh, I've forgotten who the 1AA team. Oh, South Dakota. Mm-hmm. South Dakota beat North Dakota State. You know, South Dakota's not bad, but, but you can compare all these teams. I think Missouri gives LSU a very tough time. I do too. Maybe beats them. So uh, now that a lot of those playoff games have been swept out, there are a lot of fan bases, including some locally, that are just, okay, baseball's over for us, and good luck to you, and hopefully you win a championship. I don't really care. So most people, at least locally, are probably paying attention to what teams are going to be doing in the free agency, the Royals, the Cardinals. When can that start? After the World Series. Immediately after the World Series, free agency goes into effect, and then the wheeling and dealing can be done. And if you can take any hint from this, the Cardinals have already said there is nobody now that's qualified, of course, but nobody untouchable on their team. If that's the case, I'm going after Jordan Walker right now, and I want him on my club. And uh, the same with uh, Nolan Arnato. Now, keep in mind, they're not going to trade those guys. Paul Goldschmidt, who becomes a free agent after the coming season, 2004 or 2024, I should say, he may in fact fall into that category. But there are going to be a number of changes because Marmol and the front office were not happy with some of the players and their attitudes, especially early in the season. I think many of them calmed down. But hey, there are going to be a number of changes in big league baseball during the uh, offseason, the hot stove league, so to speak, uh, between. uh, Mid-November and then uh, probably mid-February. So you got a little bit more time to wait. But uh, like they always say, there's always next year. All right, we did talk about how the pitch clock made the game faster by uh, kind of a lot and how that also included and increased things like stolen bases, which is, again, a very exciting thing and made offense a little bit more exciting. The game itself, 
got quicker too, right? Well, it did. Overall, you see speed. Speed is the killer in all of sports. The Atlanta Braves, who had 104 victories this year and played the Phillies in the divisional matchup, have a really fast team. Ronald Acuna, for instance, 40 home runs, 60 stolen bases. You mentioned the stolen bases. That's one of the keys. Uh, Over 1,000 more stolen bases, 3,503 stolen bases. That's not the record, but it it represents a 1,000 stolen base increase over last year. And it does indicate two things. The pitch clock had a major effect on that, as did the relatively minute shortening of distance between second and first base. And we're talking about inches as opposed to feet. But the fact of the matter remains, the game is quicker. You have faster athletes who are challenging. Watch some of those defensive plays in the outfield. They are absolutely unbelievable what some of these guys come up. That used to be brilliant, sensational catches back in the old days. Now, many of these fielders are making that look routine, diving and making just backhanded catches and so forth while sliding. It's really very entertaining to me and I think exemplary of the physical abilities of many of these players. And... If you want new fans, it's the only way you're going to get them. Um, Speaking of baseball, got a little bit left to play at Hammonds Field. When's that going to happen? It's going to happen on October the 19th. Now, this is later in the year than it normally is, but October 19th is Battle for Bell. We've talked about it before. Uh, For the second straight year, it's going to be four games. I'm I'm sorry, uh, two games with four teams and not just the two. It was always Missouri State and Drury. Well, those two are still going to play on Saturday night, or uh, Thursday night, I beg your pardon, October the 19th. But it's preceded by a noontime game between Baptist Bible College and Evangel. So it's a four-team, two-game matchup called Battle for Bell. It's all a benefit for the late Howard Bell and the ALS Foundation at Cox South here in Springfield. ALS, folks, is a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, a.k.a. Lou Gehrig's disease. It is incurable. It is eventually fatal. And it is it's just, a, just a horrendous malady that befalls many people. There is no cure. At least there's none now. This is money that goes to the research and maybe the development of better implements to handle people who are affected by ALS and eventually to come up with a reason why it happens and a cure to it. That, somewhere in the offing, that will be the case. But it's October 19th, Hammonds Field, two ball games, one at noon and one at 6.30. The 6.30 game is the Bears and Drury. Two weeks from tonight, get your tickets, Ned. Have a great Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow.